A year ago, the Nashville Knights and the Chicago Bliss were considered two of the LFL's elite teams fighting for the opportunity to advance the Legends Cup. Tonight, they are simply fighting for respectability. What time is it, Gators? What time is it, Gators? Live in the moment. This is your moment. But you ain't no big bad bitch if we break your rib cage. Stop giving them free shit. Do your motherfucking job. We are in the Windy City for LFL Football Night. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Joining us a little bit later, Ms. Heidi Golznick providing sideline coverage. Tonight we got a rematch of the 2018 Eastern Conference Championship. If you remember that game, folks, it came down to this final play at the goal line. It was Allie Albert stepping in front of a KK Matheny pass and taking it to the house for a walk-off pick six. That moved the Chicago Bliss to Legends Cup 2018. But fast forward to tonight, these two teams look very different, Bobby Yuko. No, absolutely. The rosters on both these teams is nothing like they were in 2018. For Nashville, there's a new head coach, Yuri Howard, replacing Danica Brace. The problem is this team doesn't have the passion or they don't play with the same intensity as they did with Brace as the head coach. For Chicago, a completely different culture change from the championship year of last year. On and off the field, nothing is working. Although in their last game, they almost shocked the LFL world and beat Atlanta in Atlanta, but guess what? They did not. That was an electrifying game. Hopefully that momentum carries over into tonight because overall, it has been a massive disappointment here in Chicago. Head coach Sidney Lewis has really struggled to prepare team on the field. The offense has looked very unorganized at time. Chaz Dusan looks out of position at quarterback. Even veterans like Tamika Robinson and Javille Thompson are not making the same impact they did in 2018. In fact, our own Heidi Goldsnick sat down with Tamika Robinson to talk about the disappointment that has been the 2019 season. Thanks, guys. Anyone who follows the LFL has witnessed the Chicago Bliss win a league leading four Legends Cup championships. The Chicago Bliss playing in the Legends Cup became as expected as the New England Patriots playing in the Super Bowl. However, as with any sports franchise, there comes a period of rebuilding, and for the Chicago Bliss, they're feeling that pain right now. I sat down with second-year wide receiver Tamika Robinson to reflect upon the 2019 season. Tamika, I know it's been a tough season so far, so let's first reflect back on what it was like to win a Legends Cup in your rookie season. Um, it was awesome. Um, it was, we put in the work, you know, and it was just something that I was really excited about. That was our goal, and we prepared for it. And it was really fun just to have my first year coming on the field when, you know, the celebrations, you know, my best friend won, the MVP that game. So it was really, really fun. I loved it, I really enjoyed it. Besides the different coaching staff and athletes, is there a cultural difference in the locker room between last season and this season's team? Um, there's a, a big difference. Um, last year, we kind of, we had a lot of athletes on the team, right? And they naturally were athletic. And I think that this year now, we have to kind of work a little bit more at it. Um, the culture is a lot better this year. We do a lot of bonding together. We do a lot of things to kind of build the culture of the team up. Um, and so we kind of work as, so there's a big difference, I would say. It, it's a really big difference. I like it. I like it a lot. Do you think that this current team in the way it's molded can return to its traditional winning ways again? Absolutely. I think that this year we're building and I think that we have a lot of athletes and we're getting better. Every game we've gotten better. Um, we've worked hard. We're building the culture. I think that next year we're going to step up and we're going to be great. I think that it's just a we're building, you know, I feel like without the foundation that we're building now, we wouldn't be where we are. 
and we're gonna be better next year. So we'll be ready. Losing is certainly not easy for any team, much less one that comes with the expectations everyone has upon the Chicago Bliss. In speaking with LFL insiders this past week, tonight's performance will play into whether or not this team and its leadership are invited back in 2020. Back to you guys. The Chicago Bliss enter a crossroads game. Can they rebound and have hope for the future? Or will the National Knights put the final nail in their coffin? Let's find out. The first half is next. Back to LFL football night in one of my favorite cities, Chicago, Illinois. And that's a look at the 2018 Legends Cup Championship banner. As we talked about in the pregame show, Bobby Huco, a very different Chicago Bliss team comes in tonight. Wow, you win the championship last year, tonight not even close, haven't won a game. They have a tough game against that girl right there, quarterback Molly Richardson, one of the up-and-comers in the LFL. Great numbers so far for her first year. She studied under KK Matheny. I really like her at quarterback. You saw the numbers are Richardson, the fourth-ranked quarterback, mishandles the opening snap, and that ball is still loose. Finally recovered, that looked like Gabrielle Todd avoided absolute disaster here in the beginning. Some early game jitters here for Nashville. The center, Melberg, snapped it very low. Richardson should have handled it, it was low, but she's an athlete, should have caught the football. Not a good start for Nashville. That was a seven yard loss. Now setting up a second and 17. Ball backed up to the Nashville eight yard line. As Richardson moves under center this time. An inside handoff, Gabrielle Todd. Todd, the leading rusher for this Nashville night team, really one of the bright spots and one of the young talents on this roster. They want to get the ball to her a lot tonight. I like the call, trips left, fake screen, Y under. Smith took the brunt of that tackle, but she got Todd on the ground. So a third and 15, only a two yard carry by Todd. A nice release play to Maya Houston, and Houston still on her feet. The tight end, one of the larger frame targets for Molly Richardson at 5'7", 185 pounds. Part of a pretty good Nashville offense as we meet their starters. Austina Melberg, your center. Maya Houston, tight end. Gabrielle Todd, tight end. Brianna Mosley, wide receiver. Netta Carter, wide receiver. Nene Gleaves, runner back. Molly Richardson, quarterback. Watch out for Nene Gleaves, one of the most explosive players in the LFL. She's seen a lot of action tonight, her first time this year for Nashville. Yeah, Gleaves was a star last season. This is a fourth and five. Getting dragged down for a loss of five was Gabrielle Todd. Make it Netta Carter. So the Chicago Bliss defense, mind you, the worst defense in the league coming in, gets a huge stop and sets up their offense inside the 15 of Nashville. Great read by Vander Heiden. She's really come on strong. Her first game looks like a deer in headlights. She's learning the LFL. Now she looks like a possible all-fantasy candidate. She is one of the best defenders on this suspect defense for Chicago. So now we see the Bliss offense for the first time tonight. That's the quarterback, Chaz Dusan, who's gotten the start throughout most of the season. They have worked in Sharquela Baker from time to time. They're the Dusan numbers. Not great, respectable. She hasn't turned the ball over. She does most of her damage with her legs. I'm just glad she got her chin strap on. She was not worried about the play. She was worried about getting her helmet on. Wow, never saw that. First and 10, ball at the 15. Great field position. Dusan mishandles the ball. That's Javil Thompson, the veteran, able to recover to Dusan fumble. A loss of two yards. And now we'll meet that starting lineup for Chicago. Kate Mustin, Sutter. Tori Phoenix, tight end. D High Power, tight end. Kylie, wide receiver. Tamika Robinson, wide receiver. Javel Thompson, running back. Chaz Dusan, you're a quarterback. Dusan is the key to this offense tonight. She cannot make plays like she just did. She has to protect the football. A second and 12, a delayed handoff. That's Tamika Robinson, able to get the edge for about four yards, setting up a third and eight. 
Now let's meet that Nashville defense. Nene Gleaves, D.N. Maya Houston, D.N. Anisia Shali, middle linebacker. Gabrielle Todd, free safe. Oriana Taylor, strong safe. Christina Howard, corner. Carissa Burnett, corner. At 5'10", 175, Maya Houston is simply a beast up front. They're going to have to double team her tonight. A toss right on a third and eight to Emma Vander Hayden. We really haven't seen Vander Hayden featured on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, she's tied for the league lead in interceptions, but doesn't really have the speed to get to the outside. An interesting choice of personnel move there. I agree. Why Sid Lewis, the head coach and offensive coordinator tonight, gives the ball to Vander Hayden instead of Thompson or Tamika Robinson just doesn't make sense. So now a fourth and nine, ball at the 14. Jazz Dusan hoping to convert, going to the end zone, caught and dropped. A drop in the end zone by Ty Alley, perfectly placed by Chaz Dusan. This was the offensive game plan. Nashville's corners, they come up and squat against the receivers. Ty Alley gets separation, perfect pass by Dusan. You have to catch that football. That's a game changer. Should be six points for Chicago. A squandered opportunity. Think about it. Chicago had a first and 10 inside the Nashville 15-yard line and came away with no points. We questioned Dusan, and is she a quarterback? Right there, she looked great. And that's Nene Gleaves, a collision with Vander Hayden. Gleaves does manage four yards. Keep in mind, Nene Gleaves was actually up for Rookie of the Year honors in 2018. Some personal family issues in the offseason kept her away early in the season. Now back in the lineup. With the addition of her in the backfield, she is simply an explosive back. Now you have her at running back, Bree Mosley at wide receiver, and Molly Richardson at quarterback. They can score some points. That is a pretty good big three. Now a second and six at the Nashville 18-yard line. We are, so we do have a rookie officiating crew on tonight. They're misspotting the ball, so that was a delay. Molly Richardson from the shotgun. Fakes the throw, this is a draw play again to Gleaves. And just open field in front of Gleaves. A seven yard carry, and that'll be a Nashville first down. I love watching Gleaves run the football. Watch this jump cut outside. Her GPS doesn't say tow roads, only high speed roads. Gets big yardage for Nashville. And just running over the defender. That was Jocelyn Gray, outmatched physically at 5'4", 140 pounds. And now a first and 10 for this Nashville offense at midfield. From the uh, shotgun, rolling right, Molly Richardson avoiding the rush. And now chased down and sacked. Deanna Hightower leading the charge, but we've got a flag on the field. We'll get our first call of the night. Again, a rookie officiating crew tonight, led by Milton Creighton. We got encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So I guess we're not going to get a number on it, but that penalty on Chicago, and it did look like it perhaps could have been Tara Organiziak. That'll set up now a first and five at the 20 for Nashville. When I interviewed head coach Sid Lewis, he said, or Guinezyak has a problem watching the football on defense. She listens to the snap count, but doesn't watch the ball. And it showed there. So ball at the 20 now for Nashville. A decent drive here. This is an option. She's going to toss it out to Gleaves. Gleaves really headlining this drive. A five-yard carry. Already racking up 16 yards on this series. The number eight ranked Chicago defense will be tested tonight as we meet their starters. The high for defensive end. Tara Ganachek, defensive end. Shark Baker, middle linebacker. Jocelyn Gray, free safety. Emma Vanderheiden, strong safety. Brinthia Murdoch, corner. Jess Smith, corner. Jocelyn Gray, the free safety. She cannot let the potent receivers for Nashville get behind her tonight. Another handoff, this time Carissa Burnett. A great open field tackle by Jessica Smith. And that's Sidney Lewis. We met with him to talk about the team's future. 
If you were the owner of the Chicago Bliss, based upon the results of this season so far, would you bring back this team, yourself as well as your coaching staff? If so, why? I would definitely bring back myself. I would bring back the core of this team. Uh, the girls definitely will have to fight for positions going into next season. I will be trying to bring in, the, I will be bringing in a better coaching staff that's a little bit more dedicated. It's going to be able to, that I'm able to coach up to the way I want them to be as well. Um, yeah, if I was the owner, definitely, because I would see the, the maturation. All you have to do is put on the film. Game one, horrible. Game two, not uh, still bad, but a little bit better. Game three, we rolled into that joint feeling real confident about ourselves. Game four, we're going to come out with the victory tonight. So that's why. Sid Lewis is real open about his coaching staff and players. He told me most of his coaches will be gone, and he will have a different quarterback next year. Kind of throwing that coaching staff under the bus. Meanwhile, Molly Richardson showing you some of that mobility. Scrambles for seven yards. That'll set up a fourth and four. Getting back to Sidney Lewis, he's right. This team has gotten better as the games have gone on, but I don't think they've progressed as much as you would hope they would have progressed. That's why he's disappointed with his staff. I mean, you're either coaching or you're allowing things to happen. This team is undisciplined. His assistant coaches aren't disciplined. He's going to make some changes. So now a fourth and four in Nashville. Gonna let it get down to the two minute warning and talk about this vital play. Meanwhile, Nene Gleaves in this Nashville offense is on the move. Back to LFL football night. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field. We go out and attack them first for pass protection that they don't slap you in the face. Knock those hands down and get in their pads because if I'm body to body with her, she has to go around Post the game to the space. Get inside and drive the feet right now. First down, let's go. Danica Brace, you have to love her fire. One of the greatest players ever to play in the LFL. She was the head coach last year. A lot of players would like to see her back in that position. She is taking more of a command role here down the stretch on a fourth and four. They're going to go back to Gleaves. Gleaves breaking through the first set of arm tackles, but not able to get to the sticks. I don't think she understands she did not pick up the first down. A great tackle by Jocelyn Gray. Gleaves did a great job to get through to the second level, but you're right, she came up a yard short. Gray came up and nailed her. And here we go again, Nashville cannot get the first down. Yeah, they're able to move the ball between the tens or our red zone in the LFL. But inside the red zone, this offense has really struggled to capitalize. Defensive coordinator right. Sid Lewis sweet. is really impressed how his defense has progressed during the season. They were really bad in the beginning. Here we go tonight, already two stops against Nashville. And now a high snap that sailed over the head of Dusan and luckily able to get back on it. But that'll result in our first score of the night, a safety for Nashville. Chicago needs this like a snowman needs a scarf. Here we go again, a bad snap. She gets on it, but it's two points for Nashville. Just giving this game away. Are you saying you don't like snowmen with scarves? I think that's adorable. But you don't need the scarf. That is I'm true. First titties, and 10. Vail didn't have to come out the game. D didn't have to come out the game. Strap this shit down, put the fucking paces on, whatever the fuck it is. Let's go. Come on. Head coach Sidney Lewis trying to pump up that offense after Kate Meston sailed that ball over the head of Dusan. And that's really our only score of the game thus far. A two to nothing lead for Nashville as they go back to work from the 15 yard line. A low snap to Richardson, handoff, Netta Carter. Carter slow to get the edge, another tackle by Emma Vander Hayden. What a play by Vander Hayden. She came up on Nene Gleaves, just pushed her in the backfield, shed her off, and then hit Todd. Todd's a talented back. I'm gonna tell you what, Nashville has some weapons with Todd Mosley and Richardson. Head coach Yuri Howard knows he has to get the ball to Todd to have any success on offense tonight. Second and nine, ball at the 16 of Nashville. Receivers flanked to the right side, a quick screen. That's caught, Bree Mosley. A dangerous looking pass to Mosley, nearly intercepted by Emma Vander Hayden. Sid Lewis, the defensive coordinator, had his team ready for that play. He told me they scouted that trips right, quick screen. 
Vander Heiden jumped on it. Just a great pass by Molly Richardson, somehow keeping it high. So Bree Mosley's the only one that could catch it. So now a third and one. And that looked like Chicago may have jumped. Tara Organicek, the right defensive end. We'll get the official call here from Milton Creighton. Flag on the plate. We have encroachment on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty, first down. First down. He didn't give us the name, but that was Tara Organicek that jumped. That'll make it a first and 10 at the Chicago 21-yard line. I think head coach Sid Lewis had enough of that. He is yanking Organicek out of the ball game. You can't jump off like that. That's twice already in the first half. Now, I don't know if that's the cadence for Molly Richardson or just lack of discipline from Organicek. Nonetheless, a first and 10. In fact, they're going to move it inside the 21 of Chicago. That's free yardage for Nashville. You can't do that, so he pulled her out of the game. So here we go, Molly Richardson with an empty backfield from the shotgun. Not able to set her feet, but caught. Somehow amazingly caught there by Gabrielle Todd. A three-yard reception. I love the way the quarterback, Richardson, went down the food chain quickly went to her third receiver, got it to Todd. Instead of a sack, they got three yards. This should be the final play of the first quarter. Ball at the Chicago 18-yard line after that three-yard reception. This time a full backfield with Richardson. That'll be a draw play. Gabrielle Todd still on her feet and getting out of bounds. At about the 18, a gain of five yards. And that will officially bring us to the end of the first quarter of play. Really a quarter that was headlined by decent offensive plays, but mental breakdowns hey, hey. as we go down to the field. Hey, real quick. Excuse me. Real quick, Milton. Real See, quick. I hear you, man. Listen, they hold like a motherfucker at the point of attack where we just went over. talking about that. I right? saw that. She shook she, that. She, she, she holding like a mother. She holding my corner, jersey all out there. She can't get to her. You got to throw that flag. We can't give no freebies to her. Let's go. Sydney Lewis lobbying for a holding call. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. Nashville up on this safety, two to nothing. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night here in Chicago, Illinois. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco on the call. Heidi Golznick providing us sideline coverage in a game that the Nashville Knights lead two to nothing. And their offense is on the move again. Sid Lewis has to be happy with his score. They came in big underdogs, only down two points. He can't be thrilled with his offense though. They're doing nothing. So a third and two at the Chicago 13. Receivers flanked to the right side. A crossing pattern, that's intercepted. What a play by Jocelyn Gray. Just when this defense needed someone to step up, Gray intercepting Molly Richardson's pass at the goal line. Just a bad pass by Richardson. Mosley did a nice job settling in a hole. She's open, just an overthrow. Richardson learning real quick, you got to fly straight against his defense or you're going to get shot down. Bad throw. And the concentration on Jocelyn Gray to not lose sight of the football. She looked more like the receiver than the defensive back on that play. Great play. She's like a center fielder. The Chicago defense is shutting down Nashville. So now a first and 10 at the Chicago four. Let's see if they can capitalize. And quarterback keeper, that's Dusan. Showing that Cam Newton type size, a 12 yard carry. That'll get him out of the hole inside the four, all the way out to the 16 yard line. I asked Coach Lewis if he changed quarterbacks next year, where would he put Dusan? He said right there, running back or wide receiver. He doesn't think she's a quarterback, maybe a backup quarterback, but could be a great running back. I don't think she has the speed to be running back. I'd love to see Dusan at tight end, possibly. Now a first and 10 at the Chicago 16 yard line. This time Dusan under center. That's Jabil Thompson in motion, inside handoff. Thompson gonna get the ball. A seven yard carry for the veteran. 
That'll set up a second and three inside the 23-yard line. This shows you the kind of talent that Thompson has. When she gets to the point of attack, you see her stats there, great stats, 88 yards, only 22 carries. She got to the point of attack, there was three Nashville defenders untouched, and she shucked and jived and got seven yards by herself. Second and three, ball at the 23. Dusan this time from the shotgun, a high snap, able to manage it. A reverse, Tamika Robinson. An eight-yard carry, that'll be a Chicago first down. And finally, some life to this offense. It's all about execution. Watch the seal block by Tori Giles. Watch this right here on Shelby. Just flattens her, which opens up the whole outside. Great block by Giles. This Chicago offense finally on the move down to the Nashville 19-yard line with eight minutes remaining here in the second quarter. If they can eliminate stupid mistakes, they can move the football. Dusan under center, a design keeper. And I'm not sure she, I don't think she wanted contact on that play. They haven't blown the whistle just yet. We'll see where they spot this ball, but Dusan still fighting that Nashville defense. That is a big quarterback, tough to get down, and we've got another flag down on the field. Kate missed and not having a good first half. Blatant hole, I think that's what they're gonna call. We have a penalty on the, on the plate. Number 14, Chicago, 14 holding. Holding on the offense, 14. You called it Bobby Hugo, yeah. the penalty 14. on Kate Meston. Spot. You guys remember Meston's earlier snap that sailed over the head of Dusan, resulting in the two points for Nashville. Meston just not really a natural at the center position. They're still struggling to find a good fit for her on the roster. Referee Milton Clayton had no choice. She actually tackled the defensive linemen. They had a call holding. So the ball backed up to the Nashville 22. Another poor snap back to Dusan. Looking to the end zone and under thrown. Pass intended to Tamika Robinson, well short of the target. Robinson had the defender beat again. Benston with a shady snap, rolled it out there. The quarterback, Dusan had to take time, pick it up, and then under through the football. But it all starts with a snap. Now a second and 13. And you could see Tamika Robinson upset, wide open in the back of the end zone. Ball really underthrown by Dusan. Second and 13. From under center is the quarterback. Toss right, Javille Thompson with blockers in front. Thompson on her feet down to about the Nashville 15-yard line, a seven-yard carry. There was two parts for the Chicago offensive game plan. One was right there, give the football to Javel Thompson. The other was to go deep against the corners who squat up tight, and the running game's working so far, the passing game is not. Yeah, you really got to play to your strength. You've got some size up front, good power blocking and power running with Javel Thompson. You gotta try to keep it on the ground. Dusan has struggled through the air most of the season. Third and six, ball at the Nashville 15. Receivers all flanked to the right and left. That's complete, Tory Childs. An 11 yard reception. Ball down to the Nashville four yard line and you are definitely sensing a change in momentum here. I like the call by offensive coordinator Sid Lewis. Get rid of the ball quickly, get it out to Giles quick. Great downfield block by Thompson. That's Chicago football. Boom, 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 make some yardage. Torrey Giles, like I said, a lot of size up front for the Bliss. They just haven't used it to their advantage. When you talk about Deanna Hightower, Kate Meston, and Torrey Giles up front. Dusan, the quarterback, does not look bad with that short passing game like that. So now a first and goal for the Chicago offense, and that's a fumble. Ball is still loose. And that looks like Nashville may have recovered Oriana Taylor. How many times tonight has the exchange between center and quarterback, shotgun and under center, cost them a drive inside the five? The ball's there, it hits her in the hand. You have to grab the football, ride with the center. We've been all over Kate Meston all night. That's the quarterback, Chaz Dusan. Get the football, secure it, then run with it. So a seven play drive for Chicago yields no points. We'll be back after this. Back to LFL football night in Chicago, Illinois. 
in a game where the hometown Chicago Bliss trail it two to nothing. First and 10 as Nashville takes over from the seven wide open. Great open field running here. Oriana Taylor still on her feet. 15, 10, all the way down to about the seven yard line. A 34 yard connection. Most of that as a result of the running of Taylor. Great call, great throw by the quarterback Richardson. Watch how quick she gets the ball to Taylor. Boom, get the snap. They're coming, blitz, get rid of it. She read the blitz, get it to Taylor. Now it's all Taylor. Jump cut, boom, go inside. They're at you right now, boom, reverse out. Go down the sideline, stay tight to the wall. Unbelievable play by Taylor. They're moving the football, wow. Great run by Taylor, but even worse tackling by that Chicago defense. A lot of high arm tackling. That is not gonna get Taylor down. Ball inside the nine yard line after that 34 yard catch and run by Taylor. Nashville's gonna stay on the ground. That's Netta Carter. Another great tackle by Emma Vander Hayden. Despite what's happened here in the first half for Chicago, Vander Hayden has really been one of the bright spots. The bright spot. She is all over the football field tonight. But here we go again in the red zone. Both teams, they get their offense somehow uninstalled every time they get in the red zone tonight. Second and goal. Ball remains at the nine of Chicago as we near the four minute mark of the second quarter. Richardson in a deep drop. Toss left. Ball's going to go to Nene Gleaves. Leaves manages only two yards. A great tackle by Labrinthia Murdoch. It was a blatant hold by Taylor on Oregon check. That's why Cleves could get to the outside. Philly on the plate. Blue seven, Nashville. Number seven with the hold. There are actually two holds. Five y'all feeling the pizza down. As we get another For look at this, spot. you'll see Oriana Taylor getting the first hold. Then Netta Carter, a bear hug. So you pick your poison. That penalty could have gone against Carter or Taylor. Bad blocking. It was a good run by Cleves, but there was a reason nobody was out there. So it remains second and goal. Ball backed up to the 16-yard line. So this Nashville offense will have three opportunities to get the ball into the end zone against a really tough Chicago defense inside the red zone. A delayed snap back to Richardson. Richardson, a crossing pattern, caught. That's Maya Houston. Touchdown, Nashville. But hold the presses. We've got a flag down on the field, an early indication this may be against Nashville. Great pass to Houston, and she bowled her way right through everybody into the end zone. They're bringing it back. We got a holding. Nashville, number nine, on the, on the offense here. Holding, offense. I actually they're thought Carter had a solid again. downfield block, Good but block. they're bringing it back. They're calling a hold on it. So that's disappointing for this Nashville offense as we get another look at this Maya Houston reception. Remember, the hold was on Netta Carter. I'm not sure if we got a look at it here. There it is. That's a not steal a hold. block. That looked like she held her block pretty nicely. That should have been maybe a no call. That's going to back up this Nashville offense that much more. Wow, that could be a game changer. I saw no illegal hold. That should be six points for Nashville. So ball at the nine. Richardson from the shotgun trying to set up a crossing pattern. That's caught. Bree Mosley will get it down inside the two-yard line of Chicago. So when they've needed something to happen all year for Nashville, they've really looked at number 14. I like the play selection and the read by Richardson. It was man-to-man -man coverage. You got Murdoch one-on-one -on, -one on Bree Mosley on a crossing pattern. There's no way she can cover Mosley, and they Stop move it down the field. Stop the clock! That's Stop Danica clock! Brace yelling to stop the clock here. Nashville wanting a timeout. They're going to give them a timeout. We'll take one as well. Back after this. Back to LFL football night. The Nashville Knights up two to nothing and down to the two yard line of Chicago. Here we go again. This is the Achilles heel of this Nashville offense in the red zone. Let's see what they can do. 
Third and goal, a bunch set in the backfield. Handoff, and that's fumbled. Recovered by Jessica Smith. I tell you what, this defense has bent all night, but is yet to break. Wow, what a play. What penetration by Shar Baker, number one, caused the quarterback, Molly Richardson, to hand the ball quickly. There was a misconnection, a huge turnover. What a play by Chicago. Nashville has had so many opportunities inside the red zone, and there's the penetration by Baker. Vander Hayden all over Taylor and Jessica Smith playing the cleanup role. This defense has yet to give up a point. The only points relinquished to Nashville was because of the offense on that safety in the first quarter. This is Dusan. They're going to take a shot down the field, not even close, intended for Tamika Robinson. That's the problem with Dusan, a quarterback. We saw early in the game, she threw a perfect pass to tie Alley to Alley Drop, but here we go right here. It's not even close to a receiver. She's just not a quarterback. Second and 10. This is a close game. You mentioned that a lot of people thought Nashville would come in and possibly rout Chicago, but give them credit, as ugly as it's been for Chicago, they're only two down here. This is a reverse. That's Tamika Robinson making Javille Thompson. A great tackle by Netta Carter. They're going to give her three yards on that, setting up a third and seven. I hate to say it, but you mentioned it. This reminds me a lot of the Atlanta game. Hey, Chicago just down. hung around. Look at your distance. Not that it fucking matters. They, don't, they have no rhyme or reason in their offense. Danica Brace not showing a lot of respect to that Chicago offense, and I don't know who would. Ball at the 23 as Dusan looks over that play card. Dusan still not very comfortable in this offense. This is the final game of the season. You would have thought she'd warmed up to it by now. It's a design sweep right by the quarterback. A seven yard carry, and that'll set up a Chicago first down. Also bringing us to the two-minute warning here, the first half, as this Chicago offense is on the move. Back to LFL football night. Let's go down to the field. Hey, what I say? Chop the arms down, you guys, because they're calling on us, but they won't give us a fucking call. Shocker, you're in their city, so we have to beat the refs, you understand? So chop that shit down and use your fucking stuff and keep you in practice. Hey, I don't give a fuck what's going on. We are dominating this game. Just some dump, we're beating ourselves. So hold them right now, okay? This is the first down. They've had many first downs near the goal line. Hold them one more time. Get me a pick and take it to the house. All right, I'm letting you know. D, you're playing your ass off defense. You're playing your ass off defense, all right? So a quick listen in as we welcome you back to LFL football night, Danica Brace complaining about the officiating in this game. And on the other side, Sidney Lewis happy with his defense, but not his offense and possibly because of blunders like that. A first and 10 at the Chicago 20, and they turn it over on another. That exchange between the center and the quarterback. That is all on the quarterback, Chad Dusan. Come on. Kate, y'all gotta get, hey. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Calm the fuck down, this is what y'all do. Take y'all ass in that damn huddle and get some practice snaps now. Take that fucking ball. Next play, get y'all ass out there in that tunnel. Let's go, come on. Get we that out your ankle. Now. After this play, get ready to go. That is twice now the quarterback, Chaz Dutton. Watch, so her hands are in, the ball gets up. That's not on mess in the center, that's all on the quarterback. And it's all repetition, the coach is right. The problem is you'd have, you should have a million snaps before the game, not during the game or during halftime. That Chicago offense was set up perfectly at the 20, and now a pass caught. Bree Mosley cuts inside. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Nashville Knights and Bree Mosley, the rookie phenom. What looked like an ill-advised pass from Molly Richardson that was nearly intercepted taken to the house by Mosley for a 32-yard touchdown. Murdoch had the interception, just couldn't pull it in. She broke on the ball, should have been a big six. 
But Bree Mosley, one of the best receivers in the LFL, showing why right now. She is cash money in open field. What a play by Mosley and also by Richardson, the quarterback, for having the guts to throw it out there. Backpedaling, falling backwards was Molly Richardson, but had the arm to get it to Bree Mosley. You said it, Labrintia Murdoch, if she's able to step in front of that pass the way she did, that could have gone for six the other way. Mosley, three receptions, 47 yards. I love watching her play the game of football at wide receiver. So now the extra point attempt. Nashville will go for a one-point conversion from the shotgun. Richardson taking a lot of time to set up the offense, throwing to the end zone. And it looked like she threw to the outside and Mosley cut in. So some miscommunication between Richardson and Mosley. Our score remains eight to nothing after a one play 32 hey, yard drive that only Attack took 11 seconds. Apple. Attack it. At Sidney Lewis still yelling at his defense as Chaz Dusan and company go back to work with about a minute 42 remaining. And Dusan forgetting her helmet. That has been the kind of half it's been for number 15 in this Chicago offense. I have never seen that in the history of my football career. A quarterback went in the huddle, started calling the play, and then realized she didn't have her helmet on. A comedy of errors for this Chicago offense through two quarters of play. Still a minute 42 remaining. Chicago does have a timeout. And believe it or not, with everything that's gone wrong for Chicago, they're only down one score. A toss right, Javil Thompson following her blockers. All the way down to about the 25, make it midfield. So Javille Thompson keeping this offense alive. She'll move the sticks. Watch the unique leave. She's right there to make a play, but for some reason, she doesn't make an effort. She's playing great on offense, but that's kind of weak at defensive end. She had her in the backfield, but didn't go after her. So let's see if Chicago elects to keep it on the ground. That has been the only place they've had success. A minute 10, still a lot of time, as I said. They do have a timeout. And they look to be spreading out the offense here, so they'll go to the air. Chaz Dusan, another high snap. Able to field this one. Throwing into traffic, and that is intercepted. Oriana Taylor. Milton, Milton, that's a dead ball. False start, that's dead. Taylor, who's been okay. all over the field. Johnny on the spot and picks off Dusan. It is a false start, but that was another bad snap by Meston in exchange with There's Dusan. There's a double foul on the play. Who you got, what number? You got, you got a false start? We got a dead ball foul, false start on the offense. We also have an encroachment, defense, penalties offset, replay to down. So what a break for this Chicago Bliss team. An offsetting penalty voids this Dusan interception. Is that offsetting though? I see one player drawing the other one off. It's not offsetting if one draws the other one off. Well, the defense can move and jump back, but clearly Chicago jumped there. So the penalty should have been on the Bliss, and more importantly, that should have been an interception for Nashville. Who do you think is having a worse night tonight? Quarterback Dusan or the referee Milton Clayton? That's a close call. Dusan looking good on this one though, completing it into the flat to Tory Giles for 11 yards. Another high snap, but a good quick read by Dusan. Tight end release hit Giles, solid game for Chicago. The clock continues to wind down. I don't think Chicago knows there's less than 40 seconds here. They do have a timeout remaining, but they got to start showing a little more urgency. Not only, not only who's on the field. Get the fucking ball down, Kate. But the, also the offensive coordinator, Sid Lewis. I'm not sure if the head referee, Milton Clayton, I don't know why he stopped the clock. Oh, now it's running, but he had it stopped for a while. So now a first and 10, ball at the 14 of Nashville. And again, Dusan very casual walking up to the line. That's Tamika Robinson in motion. They're going to call a sweep left to Dusan. Dusan lost the ball, but appeared like she was down as the clock continues to run here. They will stop it, as I believe Chicago called a timeout. 
You got to wonder, number one, listen, you said it. Listen, they never took, they never, they, they never stopped the clock when he goes, huh? All right. Uh, that's Sidney Lewis complaining about the clock, but actually played to his favor because they didn't start the clock. We have a timeout, timeout by Chicago. I need 12 seconds we set on the game clock. 12 seconds on the game clock. The only person that should be upset here is Danica Brace in Nashville. I promise you that. She holding me so bad, my nipple coming out. Tell him that. They can't help but to hear it. I, we get it, and we don't care because we win games being technically sound football players. We fucked up too many times. We have 10 seconds. So get a turnover. Yeah, so I don't know how they added time back onto the clock there. That's okay, that's all right. Hey, 12 seconds or six, we're playing our defense. And we'll get the ball back. It's not a big deal. I believe Sid Lewis was complaining on the tackle on Dusan. They let it ran from 12 seconds to six. So the referee is putting six seconds back on the clock. Yeah, but I think the real complaint was earlier when they stopped the clock at about 34 seconds without a timeout for Chicago. So really, poor execution on the field and also clock operations here as we wind down the final 12 seconds of the first half. Dusan looking to the end zone. And that was through the hands of Tamika Robinson, who's complaining for a pass interference call, but Robinson had two hands on that football. Great ball placement by Dusan. You gotta wonder if number 16 was holding Robinson. We'll look at it real good. Great pass against the wall between the receivers. Should have been caught. I don't think that was interference, just a bad catch. And I think if that was even interference, when you have both hands on the football, Tamika Robinson, you got to come down with that. That's two touchdown passes in the first half that Dusan had dropped. Dusan back to the end zone, deflected and intercepted. How about the effort of Netta Carter to keep her concentration after that deflected ball and come up with it in the back of the end zone? Great concentration. How about that interception twerk by Nene Gleaves on top of her? What a turn of events for Nashville. That Nashville defense coming up big inside the red zone again. Dusan forcing a pass here that could have been intercepted right there by Carissa Burnett, but kind of a volleyball up in the air, and then Netta Carter comes up with it. But you gotta just chop those arms down or rip up and through her. Okay, because when she reaches out to come for you, if I knock those arms down first, then she can't get inside of you. I know. So you're gonna have to go, you're gonna have to go, you're gonna have to go inside out. And then you'll get on top of her. And she won't be able to bear hug you. And just throw her ass in the fucking turf. Danica Bray is totally frustrated with the holding by the Whoa, Chicago lineman. Oh, you guys didn't score, Boo! Interesting call there by Nashville, taking a knee with two seconds remaining. Happy with this eight to nothing halftime score. A very frustrating half for that young man, Sidney Lewis and that Chicago Bliss team. Nashville content to go into the locker room on the road up eight to nothing. Let's go down to the field. Guys, I'm with Chicago Bliss head coach Sidney Lewis. Coach, a low scoring game in part due to the poor center to quarterback exchange. You guys practice the center to quarterback exchange. They're playing like horseshit. Horseshit. My center and my fucking quarterback. I don't know what the hell they're doing. They need to get this shit together for the second half. We can have a chance to win. My fucking defense is playing their ass off. Offense, we're not giving them shit. JaVale is toting the rock pretty damn good. But this fucking quarterback and this center are about to drive me fucking nuts right now. Thanks, coach. Guys, some sloppy football from both teams. Back to you guys. Brutal honesty from Chicago head coach Sidney Lewis as we're at halftime in his blitz trail at eight to nothing. Some serious mental errors, especially by the quarterback and center. For Nashville, it's been Bree Mosley and that stellar defense. Back with halftime after this. Y'all play like some fucking pussies on the fucking line. Yeah, I said it. I ain't come out again and fucking embarrassed. I'm pretty sure you didn't either. Y'all playing fucking scared. We playing scared. If you didn't want to fucking play, get the fuck off the fucking field. Let somebody else play. That's just fucking embarrassing. But we brought here, we talk all that shit, but we ain't put on the field. That's where it matters, on the fucking field. Don't talk the talk, be about it. It's embarrassing. 
An upset to Mika Robinson as we take you inside that Chicago Bliss locker room and welcome you back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco in an ugly first half, eight to nothing. The Chicago Bliss trailing it at home. And I think if you had to summarize it for both teams, for Nashville, it was mental mistakes inside the red zone. And for the Chicago Bliss, a bit of everything. Absolutely. The word ugly doesn't do justice for this game. For Chicago, they look like a team from 2009, not 2019. Their quarterback looks lost. There's no offensive scheme. And their center looks like she just should not be playing center. With all those bad snaps, she might be a good athlete, but she's not a center. They simply look like an 0-3 team. Yeah, Kate Meston at the center position has really struggled in the first half, putting this Chicago team in a very tough position. And for the Nashville Knights, offensively, they've looked a lot better. They haven't had much troubles moving the ball down the field. Their troubles have come inside the red zone. That late turnover inside the five-yard line really hurt them. If they can convert on a couple of those, they could actually have a much bigger lead than eight to nothing here at halftime. No, you're right. That might work against Chicago. They might be able to pull this game out. But on August 10th, they play number one ranked Austin. They have to score in the red zone or they're going to get blown out. Yuri Howard and Danica Brace have to get this team together. They only racked up 76 yards offensively in the first half. More importantly, they were 0 for 2 on fourth down conversions. And defensively, against a suspect Chicago running game, they let up 54 yards. I don't know. They got to play higher in the second half. Yeah, I'm definitely a points guy, as I know you are being an offensive quarterback. Eight to nothing, folks, is the lowest score of any LFL game in the history of the league. And in previous weeks, we've had low scoring games, more recent, but that's been because of great defense. I'm not sure that's the case tonight. It's just been sloppy play. In fact, only two scoring plays. Let's take a look at both of them. Late in the first quarter, one of several poor snaps by center Kate Meston of Chicago. This one sailing over the head of Chaz Dusan and into the end zone. Dusan did recover, but Nashville took a two to nothing lead. In the second quarter, it was the rookie sensation for Nashville, Bree Mosley, catching this underneath route and taking it to the house for a 32 yard touchdown. That gave Nashville an eight to nothing lead as we look at our halftime stats. These halftime numbers are uglier than your prom date, Mitch. Both offenses struggling to finish drives. Simply a game of miscues and terrible football. Mainly the two fumbles by Chicago really stand out. Whichever offense can finish its drives in the second half will win this game. Joke's on you, Bobby. You go never went to prom. Without a rebound in the second half, this entire Chicago Bliss roster and coaching staff could be playing in their final half of LFL football. While the Nashville Knights hope to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. Here we go. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night. A beautiful night here in Chicago, Illinois. Not as beautiful inside as the hometown Chicago Bliss trail it eight to nothing at the start of the third quarter. As ugly as this football was in the first half, I'm telling you, Chicago's got a shot. They're only one score behind. First and 10 at the Chicago 15. This is Dusan back to pass underneath. That's caught. Tamika Robinson. So a decent start to the half, a seven yard reception. This offense has just got to start building some momentum. It seems like they're going well, and then it'll be a bad center to quarterback exchange, an ill-advised decision by Chaz Dusan. Something implodes internally within this offense. I like when they keep the short passing offense in. Right there, they call it a 13 whip. They have Robinson going in, fakes like she's going inside, whips outside. That's Kate Meston, and you got a shot of Deanna Hightower at center. So Meston has been removed from this game after all the problems in the first half. Yeah, Toss we get left. That's Jabil Thompson. Make it Tamika Robinson. That'll be a run of a yard. I had it right the first time, Bobby Huco. That's Javil Thompson for a yard, setting up a second or make it a third and two. We got reports from inside the locker room at halftime that Sid Lewis laid into the center, Kate Meston, and told her she was not going to play in the third quarter. Meston apparently didn't like it, and you're right, they made a change at center. 
Yeah, we saw Tamika Robinson going off at halftime as well. Maybe that'll light a spark that's needed within this offense. An ugly looking toss or a shovel pass that is caught by Javille Thompson. A 12 yard reception. Thompson complaining about a face mask. That'll be a first down for this Chicago offense. We saw Dusan in a previous game use that two handed basketball chest pass. Whenever Thompson is uncovered in the slot, as soon as she touches it, she just sends it out there and they get yardage. And I think they got to lean on Thompson and Tamika Robinson, the veterans of this offense, if they're going to have any success late in this ball game. Tamika Robinson, in fact, the head coach, Sid Lewis told me, is like a coach on the field. She's a veteran. The players respect her. She needs to take over here in the second half. An ugly looking pass by Dusan. There's been several occasions, you can see the look on the face of Tamika Robinson, where Robinson and Dusan don't seem to be on the same page together. Well, it's Dusan, the quarterback. Robinson is beating the cornerbacks of Nashville, getting separation. The problem is Dusan can't get her the ball. So now a second and 10. Dusan has had some success through the air, but hasn't really been helped. A couple of drops in the end zone in the first half by Tamika Robinson and Ty Alley. So an up and down game thus far by Dusan. Second and 10, all receivers flank to the right side and she'll roll right. This is Dusan cutting back across the middle and spinning through tackles. All the way down to the five of Nashville. A physical run by but the five foot 11 quarterback. You gotta wonder, when she makes runs like this, watch how she waits for Tori Giles to come out with the kickoff block. Boom, throws her outside, cuts back in, great cut, reverses out. This is a running back, not a quarterback. So now a first and goal. One of the better drives of the game for this Chicago offense. And some momentum, finally building on the side of the bliss. From under center, toss right. That's Javil Thompson with some stiff arms, but limited to a one yard carry. That's Oriana Taylor, late to get up, but a good tackle on Javil Thompson. Javil Thompson right now is the go-to running back for Chicago. They have a new center in there, Hightower. The quarterbacks get in the exchange. They're moving the football on the ground, keep doing it. Chicago's been able to move the ball. It has been in this area of the field, deep in the red zone, where it's been a, like you said, a bad exchange, a poor decision by Dusan. Something has caused a turnover. This is an area where they gotta get a score. That being said, give the ball to Javel Thompson. She is the running back on this team. She can get in the end zone. A third and goal, Thompson in the backfield. They're gonna give it to Thompson. Kind of a shoelace tackle to keep her out of the end zone. Thompson able to get it down to about the two yard line. That's okay, it's third down. They have two more downs to get in the end zone. If they score, they can tie the football game up right now. And that's the amazing point. I kind of made it in the first half. Despite everything that's gone wrong for Chicago, they're only one score out of this game. I like Sid Lewis made adjustments at halftime. That's what good head coaches do. Third and goal, a bunch set. This is Dusan, right up the middle, using that size. Touchdown, Chicago. One on one, it was pure strength. Dusan versus Melbourne, and Dusan wanted it more. Watch this, Melbourne's right there. Hits Dusan before she gets in the end zone, but the brute strength and the legs of Dusan get her in. A little bit of holding up front by Deanna Hightower and crew, but that went unnoticed, so the Chicago score pulls them to within two, and they're gonna go for a two-point conversion. Against all the odds, they can tie the game here against a very good Nashville night team. They lit a fire in this arena right now, and the team, you saw the offense twerking the huddle like they were at the King of Diamonds. They are fired up. No clue what the King of Diamonds is, but I'm gonna take the lead on that, Bob Huco. Here's the two-point conversion. Oriana Taylor quietly having a game MVP type performance, makes the tackle on Dusan. So Nashville will hold on to its slight lead of eight to six.
You can see a fire in Dusan too. It's a new ball game. Chicago making it a game again. Back after this. Back to LFL football night, a joyous crowd here inside the Sears Center Arena as their Chicago Bliss finally get on the board with an eight play 40 yard drive that took up five minutes and 15 seconds. There has to be some worry on that Nashville sideline. Here it is halfway through the third quarter and they're fighting for a playoff spot and they're in a barn burner against Chicago. That's a great point. Chicago's not playing for anything. They've been eliminated from postseason contention. But in this half, they are flying all over the ball. And Emma Vander Hayden and that young lady, Jessica Smith, are just about doing everything for this very good defense. They could pack it in. They could say, hey, one more half and we go home for the offseason. No, they're playing hard. They want to beat Nashville. Look at this pursuit. Bam, they're pushing them backwards. Right now, Chicago has the edge. I mean, look at how many hats are coming to the ball runner there. That was three or four Chicago players meeting at the ball. Second and 10, ball remains at the 15. A release play caught in the flat by Taylor. That is a play she nearly scored on in the first half. This time it goes for a 13 yard reception. Head coach Sid Lewis cannot be happy. He game plan for this play for Taylor. The tight end release, he knew it's coming and they still can't stop it. Oriana Taylor, as I said, has been very effective on both sides of the ball, but offensively, really starting to become a threat. The quarterback, Molly Richardson, her stats, I'm telling you, she has good stats tonight. I like the way she play fakes, then gets the ball out in the flat really quick. And talking to the Nashville coaching staff, Richardson is actually playing sick tonight, so some pretty good numbers despite not being 100%. That inside handoff kind of ugly. Went to Carissa Burnett. Make it knee knee Gleaves. Only manages at about a yard. Sometimes great athletes play their best games when they're sick because you don't overthink things. You're feeling bad. You just go out there and do what you do. Didn't Kobe post 63 points with the flu? Right, he did. The Black Mamba. Second and 10 ball at the Chicago 22. A deep shotgun drop by Richardson. Here comes the pressure. A release to Houston. Can we go ahead and just crown Emma Vander Hayden the 2018 Defensive Player of the Year? She's playing unbelievable football. In fact, Sid Lewis said, I think it was the second game of the year, he counted her in on 16 tackles. An unbelievable effort by the rookie safety. She's really kept this defense alive. Sid Lewis has this defense designed for the safety to be a superstar. He told me that in preseason, he said, our defense revolves around our strong safety. Third and eight. That's Carter in motion. A setup wheel route. That's caught by Gabrielle Todd. A nice looking play by that Nashville offense, but limited to four yards. Richardson is not scared to take a hit in the pocket. Two defenders from Chicago lit her up, and she still delivered a great pass. Yeah, Molly Richardson is really kind of settling into her own. A lot of people don't realize Richardson actually played under Dakota Hughes in Atlanta, as well as KK Matheny. That's some pretty good talent to play behind. And it's showing. She is poised in the pocket. Here comes that Chicago crowd, smelling blood in the water. Fourth and four. Richardson back to pass, buying time, pocket collapsing. That is Tara Orginichak all over Richardson. Wow, this is a classic bull rush by Orginichak. Watch her go straight back, a bull rush, a straight in. And then you throw the blocker off. Look, boom, she's on her back feet, on her heels. Throw her off, and then she makes the sack. What a play by Oregon Check. As much as this Chicago team has struggled all year, if there's one positive note you're going to take going into the offseason, 
It's got to be the effort of this defense. They have been swarming and all over the field. And by the way, this Nashville offense isn't a pushover offense. This is a pretty good O. The O can play. I'm telling you, the momentum in this arena has absolutely changed. One minute remains here in the third quarter. Chicago trailing it by two. That's caught in the flat, still on her feet. Javille Thompson. And that's really playing to her strength. If you get her the ball in open space, that's where she's going to churn out yardage for you. Exactly. And it's a short passing game again. It's easy for Dusan. You just got to drop back, make like you're going deep, and then drop it at swing pass to Thompson, one on one in the flat. Chances are you're going to get big yardage. That did not take long. Already, this Chicago offense is inside the red zone of Nashville. From the nine, shotgun pass. That's caught. Low Meyer. We haven't called Low Meyer's name at all. The tight end on a release play, and that's complete for five yards. It should be the final play of the third quarter. Chicago going with their own tight end release the first time all night, and you know things are going good when we're mentioning Low Meyer catching football. We saw that in the previous regime with Keith Hack really highlighting his tight ends. And that time, Low Meyer with a five yard reception. That will bring us to the end of three quarters of play from the Sears Center Arena. The Chicago Bliss rallying down two. 10 minutes. Put it all out on the line. You have no choice but to make it happen. The fourth quarter starts now. Back to LFL football night for the final 10 minutes from Chicago, Illinois, and also the final 10 minutes for this Chicago Bliss 2019 team, who've had a very disappointing season, but this last few minutes, you're starting to see some life in this team. Life in this team and life in this building you know who needs life is this defense or Nashville. If they slip and lose this game, they are eliminated from the playoffs. Second and goal from the four. Receivers all to the right side. Usually that's setting up the quarterback sweep. But this time, Dusan cuts it inside and she'll lose to Nene Gleaves with a great tackle at about the five yard line. Toussaint showing great moves to keep that to only, I say only a loss of two, because she could have been caught for a five yard loss. Why doesn't Chicago do more play action here inside the five yard line? Third and goal now at the six. So that was a loss of a yard. That's Robinson in motion. Looking to the end zone, kind of a jump ball. Poor placement that time by Toussaint and better coverage by Netta Carter. The good thing is they go in motion and that tells you if the defense is in man coverage and Nashville was not. So that tells Robinson to check up, find a hole in the coverage, which she did, but Duzompson's way off, wild pass. Fourth and goal. Some confusion there in the huddle. And now they're gonna swap quarterbacks as Sharquela Baker comes in. So an interesting late substitution here for Dusan. Dusan had that look like a vampire does, trying to figure out what year he was born. She didn't know what to do. So here we go. A cold quarterback off the bench and a poor snap at the feet of Baker. And all she could do is recover the fumble all the way back to about the 19 yard line. So a poor I'll ending. I'll to kill it. To kill it to stay on your side. Let's go, D. Come on. Come on. Somebody's got to explain something to me here. Oh. Sit. Sydney Lewis upset and just throwing the ball to bench. But why are you bringing Sharquela Baker in on a fourth and goal cold off the bench? Unbelievable. Baker hasn't played one lick tonight at quarterback. She's ice cold and you put her in on fourth down where she has to score or she's not successful. Just bad decision by Sid Lewis. And a worse looking pass that time. Possibly the worst pass we've seen Molly Richardson throw tonight. 
intended to Jordan Green, but going back to that fourth good goal call, again, Chicago able to move the ball, but once they get inside the red zone, they're their own Achilles heel, really. You got so many options. You got Dusan Thompson, Ali, Tamika Robinson, and you put Shar Baker in, who hasn't played all night. That is as bad a baffling call as you'll see made coming from a rookie head coach in Sidney Lewis. This is Richardson, pocket collapsing, able to get rid of it. And that's caught by Netta Carter for a short completion of about two yards. Again, Richardson showing poise in the pocket. The pocket was collapsed. She moved outside. She stayed focused and completed the pass to Netta Carter. Great play by Richardson. Here's a great test for a young quarterback in Molly Richardson. You've got a two-point lead. You can't go too conservative here. Still a lot of time remaining in this game. Can she manage a long drive down the field and possibly put a nail in the coffin for Chicago? She needs to. Right there, she's showing you she's going to air it out. And that's intercepted. Jessica Smith. What a play on the ball by number 18. Smith and Vander Hayden are all over the secondary. And once again, this Chicago defense bailing out its offense. That's the one thing that Molly Richardson could not do. Do not throw an interception. Don't turn the ball over. And you'll see she tries to drop it in a bucket over the linebacker, under the safety, and it sails too far. Playing center field, Chicago's got the football. I think you've got to keep it on the ground in that situation if you're in Nashville and work the clock. They got aggressive and they paid the piper. Jessica Smith, her and Emma Vander Hayden, if nothing else, those are the bright spots going into the offseason for Chicago. First and 10 as this offense takes over again. Max blocking up front for Dusan down the field, and that's nearly caught. Tamika Robinson with a tough catch, but one she should have come down with. Great play by Robinson coming back to the football. The ball was way underthrown by Dusan. I don't know why she so throws it like this. She has the arm, but it doesn't get there. But Robinson does what great receivers do, come back to the football, catch it on the high point. She has it, she just can't hold on. We've seen the drops from Tamika Robinson in this game. Here's the one from the first half. This was also possibly a touchdown that she just could not come down with. So that'll set up a second and 10. Ball remains at the 20, another poor snap. Back to Dusan, wide open and dropped. This has got to be the twilight zone for Tamika Robinson. Three drops that could have turned the fate of this football game. Sid Lewis just can't believe it. Great read by Dusan. As much as we got on her, she found the open Robinson. Would have been six points. She just doesn't focus and drops the football. Unbelievable. A third and 10 from the 20. This is Dusan back to pass into the flat court. Jocelyn Gray. Finally, a receiver coming up with the football for Chicago. Good enough for 11 yards and a first down. Again, a quick decision by Dusan, getting the ball out to Gray, positive yardage. They're moving again, five minutes left. If they score here, they got a shot. So now a first and 10 inside the Nashville 19-yard line. Again, this offense has moved the ball all the way into the red zone and then just self-destructed. As we approach the five-minute mark, another design keeper by the quarterback, Dusan. This time a one-yard carry tackled by Nene Gleaves and Gabrielle Todd. If for some chance Dusan stays at quarterback next year, this is one of the reasons she's going to have to practice because for this play right here, you have to carry out the fake and then take it outside. She didn't fake. Nobody fell for it. They nailed her. So now a second and nine. Clock not really a factor yet, and only a two-point ball game. So plenty of time for this Chicago Let's offense. Go. Go. As Chaz Dusan gets settled in, another poor snap back to Dusan, a dribbler. Just dumps it off to Thompson. 
and Thompson will lose about seven yards. She was better off just dropping that football. Throw the ball away as the quarterback, Dusan, should know that. And then I'm blaming the Samur Hightower for these bad snaps, but Dusan is almost 10 yards back. That's not a shotgun formation. So now a third and 16. Ball at midfield, a lot of confusion between the bench and Dusan. Now lining up under center. What are you doing? Spiking the ball. Oh, the fuck? Where the motherfucker? Can somebody explain to me, or to Sid Lewis? 24, Miko. Let's go. I think. In fact, I know. I saw the signs. They oh, called 13 oh. whip. He did the whip move like it was a whip, and she thought he was saying spike it. So she spiked it on third and 16. That's incredible. That'll make it fourth and 16. Another dribbler back to Tucson. She's going to throw it down the length of the field into the end zone, into coverage. Oriana Taylor with the interception and the run back. Still on her feet. She better tuck that ball. Looking to lateral it, possibly. So Nashville coming up big on a defensive stop after yet another poor snap back to Dusan. It's not that bad a snap. Dusan is falling back, so the ball's short. But actually, this acts as a punt. She shouldn't have caught this football and intercepted it, but she did. So they have it deep the in their own territory. We were in the same fucking play three fucking times. What did I do anything? With the same fucking motion. What did I do anything? Whip. So we ain't practice this whip. It's on you. You did this. Like you was throwing the ball on the ground. Stop, stop. That shit hey, on me, 13. Hey, shut the fuck up. Get your shit together. Sydney Lewis and quarterback Chaz Dusan clearly upset with one another. Dusan thought for some reason, with over four minutes remaining, that their head coach would say, kill the clock. The assistant coach held the playoff that said 13 whip. I saw it from up here. And then he did the whip with his hands, and somehow she thought he said kill. They're still barking back and forth. The goal. What the fuck we been? Whip! 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 What the fuck would you kill the ball with four minutes left? Sidney Lewis is absolutely on fire right now and completely frustrated with his quarterback. It would have been a great call because they completed it a couple times tonight. The 13 whip, that's it to Demika Robinson where she comes in, then goes back out wide open. Meanwhile, second and four after a six yard run by Nene Gleaves and Nashville smartly taking every second off the clock right now. And Gleaves running violently, tackled by Emma Vanderhaeden. Great blocking outside by Nashville. That's what they have to do, start killing the clock. They're still trying to settle down Chaz Dusan. This looks like maybe a penalty on play. Nashville. Nashville, five, hold on the offense. I got you. So that's a hold on Nashville. It'll make it a second and 10, and Dusan is still hot on the sideline. That was just a self-destruction. Uh, there, there's no scenario in any football playbook that you would kill the clock with over four minutes remaining on third down. Yeah, clearly a mistake by the quarterback, Dusan. I read the play. She was shown the play. But here we are, though. You got to forget it. There's still 239 left, and you're only down two points. Forget about that play. Misdirection handoff. This is Netta Carter. Nashville early, really learning from that earlier mistake, allowing Richardson to open it up in that interception. Now electing to really keep it on the ground and work on this clock. They need to keep it on the ground or short passes or the wide releases. Don't try those bombs. Not that Richardson can't throw it, but it's very risky. Timeout called by Chicago Blitz. Timeout. Get the fucking field off. We got fucking two plays. Don't fucking fall asleep. Oh shit, all right? We got the tackle. We have to motherfucking tackle, attacking they motherfucking ass. We got to get one more stop for this up. We got to give them one more chance, y'all. One more motherfucking chance. I know you still got something in the tank. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. We need it. We need it. Matter of fact, try to strip this motherfucking ball. 
and we gonna slow our motherfucking sales since we can't get this son of a bitch in on offense. Goddamn. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's I don't do know. It. Head coach Sidney Lewis is being paid by the curse word. But you know what? Maybe that's effective. He's obviously trying to get the attention of his team, realizing how important it is to get a turnover on downs. Otherwise, your season is over. It's over anyways, but you want to end it on a high note. And this is definitely a winnable game. Winnable game. Last game against Atlanta, they came within one play of beating a strong Atlanta team in Atlanta. So, yeah, he's totally frustrated. Here we go. A third and seven. An ideal opportunity for this Chicago defense to come in with a stop. Here comes the blitz and caught Maya Houston. What are y'all doing? Why does y'all switch the shit up? You two. Houston Damn. possibly with a game winning reception. Nashville needed seven yards, they got nine. Hey, get over here. What the fuck did I just say? Why the fuck are you crossing doing all that shit? Why? Why? They coming right to you. Right fucking to you. God. Go fucking limits, listen. Get this shit together. Get it fucking together. Y'all been playing great all fucking game. Don't piss down your fucking leg now. Coach Sidney Lewis and this Chicago Bliss team are down to a final two minutes. Can they mount a rally? Back to LFL football night in next week. We are in the state of Texas as the number one ranked Austin Acoustic battle the Los Angeles Temptation. A real playoff picture matchup. Salerno versus Angel, I can't wait. Here we go, the final two minutes. And that's a handoff on a first and 10 to Nimi Gleaves. Good for five yards. Chicago does have a timeout, but they've got to get a strip here defensively. If you're Nashville, do what you're doing right now. Keep it with Gleaves and Carter, and that's it. Do not throw the football. Now a second and five as we near the 130 mark. Curious as to when Chicago will use that only timeout. You got to call it here at some point. Absolutely. I would do it right now. Keep two minutes left in the game. Down to 120. A full backfield with Gleaves and Gabrielle Todd. They're going to go to Co Todd here. Up the middle. Wide open gap that closes quickly. Great tackling there by Jocelyn Gray. Good for four yards. That'll set up a very makeable third and one. What you do on that timeout is you got to teach your players again how to strip a football. So Chicago calls a timeout as Nashville is a third and one conversion away from keeping their playoff hopes alive. Back to LFL football night. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field. Come on. Let's go. We have to get this motherfucker back. They can't get no fucking yard. They probably gonna quick dab this motherfucker. Y'all got to attack the motherfucker ain't got, so. You got to attack. Y'all got to come. We got to sell out here. They hit it on the pass to get the first, they get it. But we got to sell out. Let's go. So that's head coach Sidney Lewis. So this I should see. be an all-out blitz, possibly, by the Chicago defense. Obviously a run blitz. With no timeouts left, they have to go for the football, however. He didn't mention that. Here comes that Chicago crowd urging on this defense. A third and one. Even the safeties are up for Chicago. Inside handoff, wide open up the middle. Netta Carter. If she held on to the ball, that'll be a four yard carry. Good enough for a Nashville first down and really good enough for a Nashville win. Nashville can go right into the victory formation because unless they fumble a snap, this game is over. That is Kristen Morrison, Marissa Galladay, a couple key injured players that went out earlier this season. That really impacted this team. But I think overall, despite all the ugly play offensively for Chicago, some bright spots on the defensive side of the ball that they can develop this offseason. The defense played great, and they have some stars on offense. The key is a franchise quarterback. That's it. You get a franchise quarterback, this team can win. And Coach Sidney Lewis certainly had a very tough rookie season. 
filling in for the longtime Keith Hack, rebuilding this franchise from the ground up. And they were respectable at times, certainly in this game and the Atlanta matchup, but it's been a tough season. Tough season. Sid Lewis, he came out and probably saved his job by telling everybody what he's going to do, get a new quarterback and fire his entire staff. But it could work if he gets a good quarterback. And how about the Nashville side? Despite losing all those key free agents to Seattle, very much so alive in the playoff picture, it all comes down to that August 10th matchup versus Austin. If they win out, they're in. So you've got to give a lot of credit to Yuri Howard, Danica Brace, and that crew for remaining competitive. Now let's go down to the field to our MVP, Heidi Goldsnick. Guys, I'm with Nashville Knights quarterback Molly Richardson. Molly, a big win on the road, and you're keeping your playoff hopes alive. How do you feel? Um, I feel good. I mean, we got the W, and that's what we needed to get into the to keep the playoff one alive. Not happy. It was really sloppy, so we got a lot of work to do. Uh, a lot of little things, details. So if we can clean those up, we're a playoff caliber team. All right, thank you so much, Molly. And congratulations. Back to you guys. Despite being sick, Richardson played a great football game. We're going to take a media timeout back to wrap it up after this. Back to LFL football night. While we were away, things got interesting inside that Chicago Bliss locker room. Let's say if I lost my motherfucking mind, and I said I was down the fucking ball on third down with four fucking minutes to go, what sense would that make football-wise? None. Not none. And I I said, Q, 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 you looked me in my eyes and said, yeah. No. Oh, so what if that was miscommunication? You're not going to put that on me. Because we had miscommunication. Tell us what's up with you. Don't even talk about this. I can go. Throw another chair. Well, you know, I'm going to put another chair. You're not going to blame this on me. Because we all got to do it. You ain't got no doubt about it. It's no fucking fault. It's a miscommunication. But if that's the case, if I'm going to do it, I can't bet. A lot of disarray in that Chicago locker room. I've never seen anybody throw a chair like that. Not even Bobby Knight. Wow. Not the way you would want to end your season if you're the Chicago Bliss. Some serious concern with that franchise for the Nashville Knights. They get to live another day and are still in the playoff hunt. For my partner, Bobby Huco, our sideline reporter, Heidi Goldsnick, our producer, Alex Saxon, our director in the truck, Austin Lake. This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.